Welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. You are watching the campus television channel of Don Bosco College, Kottayam. This lecture is on the prescribed syllabus of third semester MA English Literature and Language. Paper is Linguistics and Structure of English Language. In this lecture, I am going to deal with Transformational Generative Grammar. And this is part one of this lecture. Transformational Generative Grammar is one of the most influential of modern linguistic theories introduced through Noam Chomsky's Syntactic Structures published in the year 1957. Though the theory was revolutionary, some of its basic concepts were already there in the existing theories. A new version of it was presented in his Aspects of the Theory of Syntax. He questioned some of the basic principles of the structural approach. The term transformational generative obviously suggests that there are two aspects to this theory. That is transformational and generative. Let us first talk about the first part, transformational. Grammatical theories such as IC analysis and PS grammar analyzed individual sentences to show the functions of their various parts and relationships, but not inter-sentence relationships. TG grammar shows the essential relationship between sentences such as active passive affirmative negative etc it shows how different types of sentences are derived from basic types of simple sentences through the application of certain rules called transformational rules or also known as t rules such basic types of sentences are called kernel sentences K-E-R-N-E-L, kernel sentences. They are simple, active, affirmative and declarative sentences. Other types of sentences are derived from these by the application of T rules. Chomsky handles the active-passive relationship by saying that if S1 is a grammatical sentence of the form NP1 plus auxiliary plus verb plus NP2 that is noun phrase 2. The corresponding string of the form NP2 plus auxiliary plus B plus EN plus verb V by uh, sorry then plus by plus NP1 is also a grammatical sentence. S1 means the first sentence, that is the kernel sentence. Here the active sentence and NP1, that is noun phrase 1, is the first NP. And NP2, the second NP in S1, that is sentence 1. For example, in the sentence, Tom saw Sally. This is the first sentence, S1. Tom is NP1 and Sally is NP2. The rule shows how one sentence is transformed into another. Here the active into passive. The passive sentence Sally was seen by Tom is the S2 that is the sentence 2. Thus the two sentences are related. One is transformed into another. The first of these is the kernel and the second transform. All the different types of sentences are transforms of sentences of a simple basic structure that is kernel sentences. Other types are derived from these by the addition, deletion, substitution or rearrangement of elements. So we can say that transformations involve first the arrangement of elements. Example, he is reading. Is he reading? The elements are arranged. The order is changed. Second one is addition of elements. 
For example, he can write. That is, he cannot write. Here, uh, cannot is added to the sentence. Deletion of elements. For example, you will behave yourself. That is, behave yourself. Okay. Now, here, the uh, you, uh, part you will, that is, deleted. Next one is substitution of elements. For example, I did it myself. In this, myself takes the place of I. A transformational grammar is organized in three sections. First one, base component or PS component or the constituent structure or you can also say that the uh, phrase structure. Second is the transformational component. And the third one is the morphophonemic component. So, any transformational grammar must have these three components. But some individual sentences may involve no transformation. That is, the transformational section may be bypassed in some sentences. While the other to cannot. In basic types of simple sentences, no transformation is involved. For example, he is clever. There is no transformation involved in this sentence. Now, let's understand the first section that is the base component or PS component. By means of rewrite rules, PS rules, the PS component generates the structure underlying a kernel sentence in the form of a string of symbols. For example, Sam ate the apple. In this sentence, the sentence that is divided into noun phrase and verb phrase first. Then, from the noun phrase we get noun and the part verb phrase that is divided into main verb and noun phrase 2. Then main verb is divided into auxiliary plus verb and noun phrase shows the determiner and the noun. So the sentence becomes n plus mv plus determiner plus noun. Yes, so the tree diagram is shown here. This tree representing the structure of the sentence is called the P marker. Remember this. It is called the P marker. This tree representing the structure of the sentence is called the P marker. Now the second section, transformational component. This part contains the rules known as transformational rules or T rules which can transform the kernels into various ways. The output string of the first section with the PS component is carried into terminal string by the application of T rules. Let's consider for instance how the passive sentence Jenny was seen by Jaren is derived by means of the passive T rule which is an optional T rule. Here you can see uh, NP1 that is noun phrase 1 plus auxiliary plus verb phrase plus NP2 noun phrase 2. That is transformed as NP2 that is noun phrase 2 plus auxiliary plus B plus EN plus verb plus by plus NP1. The basic sentence represented by the string of symbols to the left of the arrow could also be transformed into a negative or interrogative sentences by applying the relevant T rules. Transformations such as these are called optional transformations which may or may not be applied. As distinct from these, there are obligatory transformations. For example, 
the number transformation dealing with the agreement of an np with its verb example uh, the elephant was shot by james in this sentence when the number transformation is done it becomes the elephants were shot by james now the third section is morphophonemic component this part converts the output of the transformational component or of the base component if no transformations are involved into a phonemic transcription it consists of the processes by which terminal string are given shapes which can be identified as utterances or portions of utterances that's the string determiner plus noun plus verb plus adjective can be converted into a utterance represented in spelling as uh, the face is ugly here the is the determiner face is the noun is is a verb and ugly is adjective this lecture i dealt with transformational generative grammar and this the first part that is transformational that is discussed and uh, we have seen the three sections uh, of this transformational grammar do the given exercise and submit on time thank you